Greetings, young true believers. So today we're talking about Peter Atkinson's article, Explanation versus Prediction, which carries more weight. Now, in answer to this question, Atkinson, frustratingly somewhat, answers, it all depends on the evidence in question. He rejects the contention of the historical thesis. We call it the horse historical thesis is the thesis that whether the evidence confirms a hypothesis always depends on when the evidence is known relative to when the hypothesis is proposed, right? Now, that said, Atkinson still thinks that whether the evidence is evidence for a hypothesis does sometimes depend on historical factors about how the evidence was collected. Nevertheless, even when evidence is historical in this sense, Atkinson argues that it makes no sense or it makes no difference whether the evidence is an explanation of old uh, is an explanation of old evidence or a novel prediction. And there's this ongoing debate about which is more efficacious in confirming a theory, evidence for the theory or novel prediction, as we we've been we've seen this all week in the reading. Now, uh, when extra information is relevant to evidence and confirmation in particular cases, sometimes the extra information is historical. Sometimes it's not a word about history. History is not the neat, concise um, bit that you get in your textbook. History is often messy, the history of science particularly. So, so what kind of information is relevant in particular cases? On Atkinson's view, that's an empirical matter. So he rejects uh, moves like Rudolf Carnap's a priori attempts to establish uh, how, th 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 this, the extent to which uh, evidence can confirm a hypothesis. Carnap thinks you can do this via means of inductive logic. Atkinson says we need to dispense with that. Atkinson's argument for his verdict that history sometimes is and sometimes is not relevant to evidence rests on a consideration of different cases. In this section of his article on selection processes, or excuse me, procedures, he offers three such cases, the drug case, the lottery case, and the crow case. So in the drug case, we have a drug D, call it, I don't know, the lunacism, right? That relieves symptoms, say swelling, in approximately 95% of the cases. That is the hypothesis. The evidence is in a group of 1,000 people with symptoms S, say swelling, taking drug Delunus, 950 persons had a relief of their swelling symptoms. In a control group of 1,000 swelling sufferers taking uh, not Delunus drug, but a placebo, none of them had alleviation of their swelling symptoms. The lottery case is the second case. Hypothesis, John won the lottery. Evidence, in last week's lottery, 1,000 tickets were sold, of which John bought 999 of them at the time of the selection of the winner. It was a fair lottery in which one ticket was selected randomly. The crow case, here's the hypothesis. Female crows are black. The evidence, male crows are black. So, Atkinson argues that in a drug case, whether the evidence is evidence for the hypothesis and how strong that evidence might be depends on the selection procedures used to choose the experimental and control groups. So generally speaking, right, uh, generally nothing, invariably, we should say, um, you want to choose your uh, experimental and your control groups at random, at random, right? Randomized control experiment. That way, uh, you know prior to testing that the two groups are equal, that there are no uh, factors that are going to skew the results of the experiment one way or the other. So, without this historical information, we simply cannot tell how strongly the evidence supports the hypothesis or whether the evidence supports the hypothesis at all. Now, contrast that with the lottery case in which ev the evidence is strong evidence for the hypothesis no matter what method was used to find out that the evidence is true. Because the evidence says that the lottery was fair, that the winning ticket was picked at random, and that John held but all, of, but all but one of the 1,000 tickets in the lottery, everything inductively relevant to the hypothesis is already contained in the evidence. Finally, in the Crow case, like the drug case, whether the evidence is empirical for the hypothesis, is, is, or excuse me, whether the uh, evidence is, uh, provides evidence for the hypothesis, and if so, how strong that evidence is, depends on extra empirical information. Unlike the drug case, the extra information needed is ornithological, that is, study of birds, not historical. Using the terminology introduced by Atkinson in the lottery case, 
the evidence is empirically complete with respect to the hypothesis. In a Crow case, the evidence is empirically incomplete with respect to the hypothesis, but no historical facts are needed to settle claims about evidence and confirmation. So the lottery and the Crow cases are both counterexamples to the historical thesis of evidence, right? All right, now, one other question. We're back to this prediction versus explanation question. If the historical thesis is false, Atkinson thinks he's demonstrated the historical thesis is false, then both predictionism and explanationism, explanationism must be false. But even if the predictionist is mistaken in asserting that explanations can never be evidence, and the explanationist is mistaken in asserting that novel predictions can never be evidence, the interesting question remains whether, in cases in which history is relevant to confirmation, predictions or explanations provide the stronger evidence. Which one provides the stronger evidence for confirming a theory? This is a, a bloody battle amongst philosophers of science, right? Atkinson thinks that the correct answer to this question is neither. For if the confirming power of the evidence depends on the selection procedure used to generate it, then when our knowledge of the evidence was first acquired it makes no difference whatsoever. If the evidence, the first bundle of evidence, if you will, is strong evidence for the hypothesis because the trial will involve randomized or randomization, excuse me, over a diverse population, then the second batch of evidence must be equally strong evidence for the hypothesis if the same selection procedure was used in a trial that already took place. The explanation versus prediction distinction is irrelevant. So this uh, this explanation versus prediction uh, debate is going to come back in a very spirited way when we get to the chapter on Bayesianism. Bayesianism being a uh, an attempt to quantify prediction and how it supports or does not support uh, confirmation of theories.